Dave Perzata, emergency room physician. And thank you very much, doctor, for joining us. And given how quickly things are developing in terms of this new variant, um, what, what can you tell us about how concerned we should be and how much more information we may need? So it's only been a week since the South African authorities discovered this, but a lot of lab scientists are really concerned about it. People who aren't prone to exaggerating things have raised the alarm about the number and the type of mutation. So we need to take this seriously. Um, the real worry is that it could beat our vaccines and our monoclonal antibodies. And so what we need to do now is, is slow it down as much as possible, buy time. You know, learn from what happened in uh, January, February 2020 when we really didn't do anything when, when this happened the last time. So that should be the biggest priority right now. Well, and Pfizer, um, the Pfizer uh, vaccine, I guess BioNTech, is saying that it'll know potentially in about two weeks whether or not its vaccine will be effective against this new variant. So I'm just wondering about the process of finding out more about it, because for there to be a concern that it is more transmissible um, is based on what exactly? I was hoping you could explain we've got a variant, but then in this case we've got numerous mutations. Yeah, about, um, I think, 20 mutations or so. And what has happened in South Africa um, is that it's beaten out the Delta variant. It's self super contagious on its own. Um, the other thing is um, South Africa is roughly about 35% uh, vaccinated with at least one dose. So they're going to give us information on how many of the people who got really sick were vaccinated as well. Um, but, you know, on our end, we can tighten testing. It's not hard to adapt our testing to find this variant. Um, you know, we need to really look at screening travelers as well. We may need to bring back quarantine for return travelers as well. And what do, what do we know or what should we find out in terms of how, uh, how we go about detecting whether it is here or how the United States detects if it's there so that we know this information? If Pfizer can look at it in two weeks and say maybe the vaccine works, what do, how long would it take for a country to detect if it's there? I think we could do it very quickly. Like, you just have to tell the labs to look for a certain sequence um, and that they could do it quickly. Israel already found that they had some cases today, even. Uh, authorities in Hong Kong discovered a case, I think, in a traveler yesterday in their quarantine system. So we could uh, adapt and pivot quickly, but we have to do it um, as quickly as possible uh, and not miss the window of opportunity. Even incoming flights from Europe this afternoon, you know, maybe we should quarantine and test those travelers. And then how long would it be, do you think, before we, we know whether or not we will need, for example, if a booster shot should be recommended for everybody? I think um, if there's vaccine evasion of this and antibody evasion, the best step we can do, and the prime minister, the next thing he could do is go to every pharmaceutical company and saying, how quickly can you make these new antiviral treatments that were just developed by Pfizer and Merck? Um, that's probably the best step he can do right now. Because if it can evade our vaccines, we need to buy time to develop new ones and give treatments to people who get sick in the meantime. We'll know if the virus is here in the next few days, if this new variant is here. But to know, yeah, Pfizer will tell us in two weeks if it's evading their vaccine or not. But until then, do everything we can. We have more tools to fight this variant now than we did two years ago. We're all wearing masks, so whatever happens, if, someone, if a traveler comes and spreads it here, the spread will be limited because everyone's protecting themselves already. So I think you were in much better shape, but there's a lot of actions we can take right now. And how might this change the way we go into, um, obviously, the cold weather that we're already here, but also the holidays in terms of really being careful on restrictions? So I think what I would do if I were a you know, uh, person planning their holiday season is, you know, when you go shopping, wear a high-quality mask like an N95. That will protect you from everyone else around you if they're uh, carrying disease. I would plan for a smaller Christmas gathering, um, and I would just watch carefully how things are going. If there's a huge spike or if there's uh, an alarming increase in things, obviously we'll have to scale things down. But right now, you know, we don't need to panic. We still uh, need to collect more information. And everyone has the tools to protect themselves right now. Uh, get a better mask, recognize that this virus can be airborne, and protect yourself, your workplace, your school as well. Okay, Dr. Prasad, I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay safe.